Your question is, who are the 1% and how they managed to dominate uh, the other 99% of Americans? And uh, the 1% are economic elites. I mean, they are the top 1% uh, um, in terms of wealth in the country. And actually, even if you look at the statistics, uh, wealth in, in America has been concentrated even more severely than that. So it's really... Uh, in many ways, most of the wealth held by the top 1%, which is most of the wealth uh, held in the country, um, is held by the top one-tenth of 1%. One wealth is extremely, and income as well, are extremely uh, concentrated in America today. Now, of course, it's always the case that the elites are going to make more um, than the non-elites. By that, I mean economic elites. By definition, that's what makes them elites. But um, if you look at the trend lines uh, over the last century or so, what you saw is that you had extreme amounts of uh, concentration of wealth uh, leading up into the 1930s. Um, and then you had the New Deal program and the Great Society program that followed that. And so that from the 1930s through the 1970s, um, the wealthy were still wealthier than the rest of us, but uh, that wealth was far less concentrated. And what that meant, of course, in terms of you know real people's real lives, is a uh, massive expansion of the middle class that had never existed anywhere on the planet before to, in that large degree. And people lived um, much more prosperous lives than their parents or grandparents had. But then starting in 1980 or so, we've seen a reversal of that process. And so now we have high levels of concentration of wealth among elites, uh, that you would find in a banana republic and in, uh, you know, other parts of the world that we would probably criticize for that and that are reminiscent of the 1920s. Um, and people are suffering now. So the middle class has been eroding and people feel uh, tremendously uh, insecure economically. And the question arises, uh, you know, how does that happen? And I think the short answer to that, the simple answer, but very powerfully uh, truthful answer to that is, that our policymakers, uh, particularly in Washington, but also increasingly at the state level, um, have been bought by these special interests, these economic elites. We have a political system which um, very much uh, caters to those with money being able to buy political power and being able to buy um, policy-making decisions. So you don't do it in the old days, you know, uh, you'd walk into somebody's office and drop a bag of $100 bills on their desk, and you don't do it quite like that anymore, but the effect is the same um, because we have campaigns that are, that are financed basically by whoever wants to chunk in the money, and those people then get to get the policies that they want. And so in Congress particularly, but also in the... Uh, 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 executive branch, increasingly, I would say, in the judiciary as well, and at state-level governments, you have um, government officials who are uh, acting in response to those who put them in office by purchasing that office for them, not acting in response to the needs of the 99%, in other words, serving special interests rather than the public interest. And I think this is why you see... Um, you know, the movement that you see right now, people perceive that and they're frustrated and angry. They see that their life fortunes are deteriorating and they see that even when somebody like Barack Obama, who's supposed to be on their side, is elected to government, in fact, they're responsive to somebody else entirely, Wall Street elites. Um, Look, we're going to have millions and millions of unemployed, people really facing dire straits. And we're going to be having that for some period of time before things hopefully improve. And at the same time, there is this public awareness of this extraordinary wealth that was transferred to a few individuals. What's going to happen in this society when these people are without jobs, when their families hurt, when they lose their homes and so forth? At some point, there will be such political pressure that Congress will start getting into the act. There's going to be growing conflict between the classes. Mm -hmm. And if people are unemployed and really hurting, right. hell, there could be even riots.
Well, that was in 2009, and joining us now from Washington. You saw what happened over the weekend in Rome. You see what's happening across the country. That was two years ago. And what, once again, what your father predicted has come to fruition. Former National Security Advisor for President Carter, Dr. Zbigniew Brzezinski, over the weekend. And let me just say, Dr. Brzezinski, that <laughs> pains me greatly to say that. I'm joking. You're always you right. right. You're always right. Uh, my dad received the de Tocqueville Prize in Normandy over the weekend. Bravo. And, wow. Uh, it does seem that money it drives politics, and it's not surprising that the rich come out on top. So I wonder what your thoughts are about uh, how we can change direction. Well, first of all, I'm intimidated by your presence because you know much more about this than I do. But let me just make a couple of points. First, I think we have to have a greater balance between what I call the financial economic universe and the political universe. We live in a, a time in which the financial economic universe is instantly global, very effective in passing th enormous amounts of money all over the world rapidly, doing it in a manner which is absolutely mysterious to most citizens and in a manner in which it benefits enormously and very often because purely of speculation and without any social benefit, just to the few. So we have this financial economic universe, which is the result of deregulation, globalization, and internatization, that is to say the instant flow of money, operating mysteriously. And you have a political universe, which seemingly is global, but is increasingly fragmented. There is no center of political direction, of political consensus even. The United States, which has been playing the preeminent global role, is increasingly powerless. It can't even assert its own interests in the Middle East. And it certainly is no longer dominant on the global economic scene. So you have this, this junction. And this, this junction at the same time takes place at a time when the public is increasingly aware of the fact that some people are getting incredibly rich largely on the basis of speculation that is so mysterious that even relatively educated people can't understand it. Well, that is the source of this great frustration and of the beginnings of a global reaction against it. I think we're moving into a phase of serious social political unrest worldwide. Feels. And the publics feel about it increasingly deeply because they feel vulnerable. They feel adversely affected by it. You know, I've been looking at this worldwide riots that are developing. They're all a reflection of deep passion, deep resentment, and fear. Now, the question is, where will this go? How can this be sort of concretized? And one thought that has occurred to me, and let me sort of mention it here casually without having really thought it through systematically, I think it would be increasingly helpful if there was a movement to publish worldwide lists of people who make, largely through speculation, enormous amounts of money almost instantly and basically hide the fact from their social context. You know, how many Americans are really fully aware of how many other good people, let's say like Warren Buffett and others, who really donate a lot of their earnings to charities, to philanthropy. But how many more are there in the hedge funds, in the banks, in a variety of other places, who on the basis of speculation literally make millions of dollars that it would take a century or two for the average person ever to make? I would like to see those lists. And they shouldn't be that difficult to produce. And I think public pressure might have also some effect not only in terms of moving towards more systematic international coordination and regulation, but also to pressure some of those people to give some of it back, back to society. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, October 19th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Um, thank you, everyone. Welcome. This is my website, ggnonline.com, and um, also on YouTube, you can check out my channel. It's ddarko2012. I have a poll right here. Do you believe entertainers such as Beyonce and Lady Gaga are aware of the subtle pharaonic Illuminati symbology in their performances slash, slash rituals? Uh, so far, an overwhelming majority says uh, yes, that uh, they are aware, 76% in fact, and then uh, followed by maybe 11%. Uh, we have both 5% for no and not sure. Um, just finishing up here, and then we'll move on, followed by email. You can put in your email address right there. Okay. Um, just moving on here, 
uh, we have this, violent anti-austerity protest grip Greek, uh, Greek capital. I was going to try to play this video. It's only a minute, but uh, it just would not play for me. But I think it will, um, I think you get the picture. Um, basically, Greece uh, parliament gave initial approval on Wednesday to a new round of belt tightening needed to avert defaults despite violent protests during the biggest rally in two years against the bitterly resented measures. The record inflation gives us 3.4 billion pounds bill for benefits as most workers face meager rises or pay freezes. And um, yes, this government will be forced to increase benefit payments, uh, squeeze on workers. And uh, this is in the UK, just so you know. And says inflation pressures intensify as producer prices jump. U.S. producer prices rose more than expected in September to record uh, their largest increase in five months as gasoline prices surge. The government report showed on Tuesday. Just a little side note here: uh, they they use they like to um, uh, gauge inflation off this consumer price index and that and prices, which is not really inflation. Inflation is just the Federal Reserve buying Treasury bonds, printing money. That's inflation. It's an increase in the supply of uh, money and uh, so but they like to use this as a, as a way to uh, do it you know it's like everything else just like the unemployment rate not the real unemployment rate everything that they tell you is a lie and untrue and much like Brzezinski was saying in there um, you know all those things uh, globalization and deregulation these were all things that his buddies did they all of his buddies knew that this was going to happen this is going to benefit what he promotes which is a global government that's why my website and Everything is called global government news because we are living in a global government, a scientific dictatorship, a technocracy, whatever term you prefer. And people like that, these uh, super diplomats, uh, what would you call them? Um, go on, you know, these uh, uh, propaganda stages like MSNBC, and then they promote. They get the, uh, throw in these softball questions. And, uh, and then they get rewards, like he got rewarded for doing what he's doing. Of course, this is the same individual that uh, was there, uh, kind of the, 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 the brains of bringing down the Russians by uh, what? Uh, using the CIA and backing the Taliban and beefing them up. So yeah, that's the man right now. But basically, the gist of that, that video was, was, was what? It's class warfare. They are trying to start these riots. They're saying that there's no central... Um, no central cause. They know that because they engineered society. Him, like I said, and all of his little social engineer buddies uh, uh, created this. They they manipulated the environment to get a desired result. They're like, you know, they want to they want to be scientists, and um, so they just like they push the little levers, and now they're in a situation where they have all these uprisings. They have all these hooplehead slaves that don't know which way you know one way from another and they're just gonna i mean it's just really really sick because right now you have religion politics everything is just really kind of warped and it's and a lot of it is warped because of what they've done they're, they're they're taking down their old system they're done with it and they're bringing in the new system and it's going to be done uh through fear and that's why he said that's why those people are going out there these young people in there in there and is there, it's based off fear which is what they use the problem reaction solution is based off fear and there are some people that uh, know the other term or phrase, which is order out of chaos. So then we have EU bank failures will crash Wall Street once again in this report. We have top income in U.S. is gas Washington, D.C. area. That's what they were talking about in that video. Five banks account for 96% of the $250 trillion in outstanding U.S. derivative exposure. So this is a judge ruling. Federal Reserve now backstopping $75 trillion of Bank of America's derivative trades. That's right. And it says here Bank of America says that, uh, that the derivatives in its Merrill Investment Banking uh, have been shifted to its depository arm, which has access to the Fed discount window. This means that investment bank's European derivatives exposure is now backstopped by U.S. tax. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan sued over ATM fees. Then we have Citigroup to pay $285 million to settle fraud case, and that's, of course, in charge that defrauded investors who bought toxic housing-related debt that the bank bet would fail. And don't forget the Goldman Sachs who also benefited. France and Germany reach agreement on 2.8 trillion European bailout fund, EU diplomats say. Then we have Pennsylvania House passes Harrisburg emergency bill. This is like what? Oh, the Michigan passes financial martial law. Indiana wants to provide tax incentive for companies that build wind turbines to locate in Indiana, providing they use American steel. Because ones in Ohio were made in China, the Indiana one, the turbines were actually made in Denmark, and some were actually shipped in from China. So there you go, not even made in the USA. And also, Texas ones were made in China as well. And of course, the steel is going to probably come from Indiana, ArcelorMittal, Arcel Arcel which is a, a global company. So it's all made 
in that nice global economy that Brzezinski was talking about. Please, unheeded as students, U.S. jobs soured. He went there and spent $6,000 um, for exchange student, basically go over to U.S., and they made him uh, basically a slave worker in a warehouse for Hershey, packing uh, Hershey bars. It says they were working grueling night shifts on speed production lines. And lastly, UPS, FedEx, poised to gain from Postal Service pain. Of course, that's called competition. This is GGN. Thank you.